Hi, it's Exploring John. Today we're going to make pineapple wine. Now we're not going to use a whole pineapple and cut it up. We're going to use canned pineapple. We have crushed pineapple here. In my research I find that this is a lot fresher pineapple than this pineapple that's made to ride, sat around in your store for so long. So watch as we make it step by step. Now to start off with, we're using 10 cans of pineapple to make 5 gallons of wine. Okay, we got a pair of knee-high pull-ups. We're going to use that for a straining bag. And here goes our first thing of pineapple. And now the next one. And we'll do this until we have 10 cans poured in there. Then we'll tie it off. Throw it in the bottom of the fermenter and uh, go from there. All right, we stick it in the bag and give it a good shake. Then on to the next one. Okay, now that all the pineapple's in there, we're going to tie this off. and then drop it down the bottom. Here's what we're using for our pineapple wine. Sweet Harvest crushed pineapple and 100% juice with no sugar added. The first one for this batch. We'll pour this in the knee-high nylon uh, pull-ups. And sometimes that happens. All part of winemaking. So keep putting all 10 cans in here. All right, now we're going to add the sugar. We're going to put in two four pound bags. I know that because I've made this recipe before. There's one. There's two. Now we'll add some water and stir it in. All right, we're on our second batch. We're gonna pour two bags of sugar in. They're four pound bags. There's one, here's the other. All right, now on to the next step. All right, now we have to add our chemicals. We have five teaspoons of acid blend, two and a half teaspoons of yeast nutrient, five teaspoons of peptic enzyme, and one and a quarter teaspoons of tannin. Now I usually, you know, make a pile there and put the tannin on top so it won't stick to the plate. Now we'll pour that into our uh, fermenter. Okay, here's our primary fermenter. We'll take this plate of chemicals, pour that in, and now we'll do the same to the next batch. All right, here's our second fermenter. There goes our chemicals in. Now we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now we're going to start adding water. We'll pour it in until we have five gallons worth of liquid here. The water we're putting in, we don't want it cold, we don't want it hot. We'd like for it to be between 70 and 75. And also where we make this wine, we want the air temperature to be 70 to 75 because that's what the yeast likes. So that's what we're going with. You get it too cold or too hot and the yeast won't work. Someone had commented on my previous winemaking videos and asked what was floating in the uh, fermenter besides a hydrometer. The answer to that is a thermometer to keep track of the temperatures. I've got it up to five gallons of liquid here. It took me three gallons of water to bring it up to that. 
Now I'm going to get my stir and stir it all up and dissolve the sugar that's in there. Then we'll move on to the next step. But right now we're going to stir it all up. Okay, now this next step is stirring it up. We want to dissolve all that sugar in there. So we're going to give this a good stirring. I can feel the sugar in the bottom. I'll just keep working it until it's gone. As we look at our hydrometer here, it shows it at a 12, and that's not counting all the sugar in the fruit. So we're going to add some more water to it and drop that number down a little bit. But with the, the fruit, we just don't want a high alcohol level. It kind of takes the taste away. This way, with it being a little bit lower, we'll taste the fruit more. So it looks like we've got a uh, six gallon recipe here. Since we have two batches, we're going to do something a little different here. We're going to sprinkle it on top in this one batch and do a yeast starter for the other. So we're using this EC1118. And this one's just sprinkled on and it's done. Okay, for our next batch, we're putting like a finger's worth of uh, water in this mason jar. I'm going to pour the yeast in on top. I'm going to let it sit here and soak for a little while. Then we'll add some of the juice onto it. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I got a scoop of juice from the fermenter. We're going to pour some of that into the uh, mason jar to go with the yeast so the yeast can start getting used to our must. Now we have a napkin on top of it with a rubber band holding it just to keep stuff out. All right, here comes our must. We'll go ahead and pour the whole thing in. And we'll put the napkin back on top with a rubber band and let it sit there for a while. And it'll start uh, reproducing. I added juice to my uh, mix here one more time a couple hours later. So now I'm uh, pouring it all in. In about eight hours or so, we'll see how it makes out versus the batch where we just poured the uh, yeast on top. We're back the next day. It's Tuesday. Take the lid off and look at all that foam. That looks real good. Let's see what the hydrometer has to say. Kind of clean it off here. Okay, it's maybe down just a little bit. Let's take the other lid off. A lot of foam here too. We'll bring the hydrometer over and drop it in. Okay, it's looking good. Now we stir. Take the thermometer out. Put it there for now. This is punching down the cap. I'm going to punch down the cap. Punch all that underwater so nothing nasty will mess with our wine. Squeeze the fruit in the bag. Get that juice out. We want to get some air in there. All right, over to the next one. And we'll do the same thing. This is what you should see on day one.
one day old. Now we figured out what went on yesterday when our hydrometer readings were off. And we had to add more water. The can sizes for the recipe are 16 ounces. And these were 20 ounce cans. So we had that much more sugar and whatnot. So we ended up with the six gallon recipe. There's bubbles to go away. Look at the first one. Okay, see you tomorrow. We're here day two. We started this on Monday. It's Wednesday. We take the lids off and take a look at what we have. We see we have fine bubbles here, not the type of foam we had yesterday. Let's get that off of there. That way it's not weighed differently. Okay, let's get a reading. Trying to get this reading here. Gee. Looks like it's down to a six from a ten to a six in one day. So that's pretty good. We'll move it over to the other tub. We we'll start doing this. Start mixing it up. Getting some air into there. We could feel the fruit doesn't feel as firm as it did earlier. Now as we Mix things up, we're we'll starting to see more foam. That foam is yeast burps. So this may go pretty quick because we're going to do this till it gets down between 3 and 4 percent alcohol potential. Then we'll rack it. So when you stir it, expect to have bubbles like this coming up. We want to get some air in there for the yeast to breathe. Now we'll look over at the other tub. That's also around six. So they're both going at it pretty good. <clears throat> I'm going to get that bag underneath. It's got some crud on it. We don't want nothing nasty in there. Look over at the first tub again. You can see those bubbles have about disappeared. Another day or two, we'll probably be racking it. All right, so we're good to go for tonight. See you tomorrow. Here we are, day three. We'll take our lid off. I see some bubbling over here and bubbles. Let's take a look at our scale here. Okay, it's just a little over three. It's time to uh, rack this. So the first thing we're going to do though is pull the fruit. All right, now we're going to pull the fruit. Usually we do this a day ahead of time, but this thing finished so quick that we weren't able to. But that's okay. Alright, now I'm going to lightly squeeze these together and recover some of the juice that was in the uh, bag. Okay, trying to squeeze out some of the juice. Now we're going to rack this into our jug. Got a five gallon jug down there. Let's see here, got a little clip that slides over the dowel rod. So we have it going into the jug. We're not putting it at the bottom, we're putting it at the top so it can get its last gulp of air. After this, we'll put an airlock on it and just let it go. 
All right, so the siphon's running, and for right now, we just have to wait. We've racked the wine, the pineapple, and I've got it in three jugs, so I'll have air space in there for now, because I don't want it to bu bubble over through the airlock. But let it sit three weeks to a month, and we'll rack it again. So it's wine now. We have to let it sit and finish uh, working. That'll be three weeks to a month. We'll have some nice wine here. See you next time. Now as we mix things up, we're starting to see more foam. That foam is yeast burps. <laughs> 